guys, we've been here a lot before, but we've never gone inside. This is the archives, and inside here is the Constitution. I'm taking you by the archives, oh God, countless times. But I don't think, I don't think I've ever taken you inside. So why don't we go inside today and take a look at the Constitution? Be something cool. Open 10 to 5.30. Walk up entrance line, that's us. We're just walking out. We didn't get time tickets. I think they have time tickets for tourists, but it's pretty mellow for us. Probably gonna have a metal detector. Take off all my gadgets. And of course, there's a gift shop. <laughs> and we go. Yeah. X-rays. Oh boy. No photography. Well, wasn't that exciting? <laughs> no photographs. No photographs at all anywhere inside the museum. Now, I might have left my camera on a little bit while I was in there, but it's there. The Constitution is there, the Declaration of Independence, a whole bunch of other documents, but I'm sorry I couldn't show them to you. They just wouldn't let me take a video. Stay love you. All right, let's go out here and find something else to film. So guys, we've grabbed the scooter back behind the archives. We just came out of the gift shop. They had some cool stuff in the gift shop, including a Space Force hat. What do you guys think? Should I get a Space Force hat? That would look kind of funky. I'm, uh, now nah, we're gonna make our way downtown, see what's going on. There's the FBI building over there. I'm gonna put out this little piece of cement over here. This is kind of interesting. This is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, the FDR Memorial. But, what, you saw the other one? Yeah, there are two FDR memorials. FDR put it into, well, not his will. He told Justice Frank Flutter, who was a friend of his, that if you ever make a memorial of me, I know exactly where I want it. I want it to be no bigger than my desk, and I want it to be right next to the archives building. That's what I want. So in 1965, some of his friends got together, and they built that little FDR memorial. Well, of course, Congress couldn't just let it sit at that, and they decided... 20 years later, it was 30 years later, to build another memorial, the big FDR memorial, which is down at the Tidal Basin. So that's the original, and I've shown you guys the new one a couple of times. Two memorials for FDR in Washington, not just one. Then again, he did serve eight, you know, four terms, so most presidents get one memorial for two terms, and maybe he gets two for four. All right, let's go over here by the FBI, where the construction continues. Even though the future of this building is about to be about to be changed next month. So this is the FBI Edgar Hoover Building, J. Edgar Hoover Building. And sometime in the next month, the government is going to announce their plans for this building. Basically, they're going to build a new FBI headquarters somewhere out in the suburbs, either Maryland or Virginia. And this building, this building is going to go up for auction, I guess. This has been a huge political controversy during the Trump administration. Some people insinuated that Trump wanted to keep the FBI here because he didn't want the land to become a hotel and compete with his hotel, which was over there. But someone had run red lights. So like I said, that's the old Trump Hotel. Now it's going to soon become a Waldorf Astoria. It's being uh, re... They took all the Trump branding off it the other day. This hotel, on the other hand, is the Hotel Harrington. And this is actually not a very... You know, it's a rather inexpensive tourist hotel. However, this hotel pops up a lot in the January 6th because a lot of the January 6th uh, people stayed at the Hotel Harrington, used it as kind of a base of operations. And there's a lot of police inquiries going on about people who stayed at that hotel during January 6th. We should have a motorcade soon. Oh, there's some Trump stuff. Now, whenever I ask these guys, which sells more, Biden, Harris, or Trump, and they always are like, it's 50-50, it's 50-50. They don't wanna, they don't wanna potentially ruin a sale. <laughs> All right, in we go. Whoa, made it. <laughs> That one's the most narrow one of all these bollards. The other ones are a little easier, but that one there, that's always the one that scares me the most. Like I said, bank buildings. Uh, 
Pennsylvania Avenue is busy today. Quite a few tourists out and about. The park's pretty quiet. Hmm. I'm glad the scooter's still running. It's kind of the keys. You have to stay right in about in the middle of the road. Because if you get too close to the sides, the geofence will kick off the scooter. Okay, there's your White House behind the trees and the fountain and the tourists. Still there. That was a pothole. Oh, vehicle coming out. They always put a guy in front of the door. They're used to you. And the Vice President's motorcade should be lining up over here somewhere. Unless she already left and I missed her. That's possible too. Hmm, no, no, they're tangled. It looks like they're down there. She's gonna go out this side. Oh boy, those bollards just popped right back up in front of me. This one's slow. Funk. Like that way. Let's go. Whee! Oh, the smell of that steam tunnel is pretty disgusting. Especially as I want to get something to eat. Alright, we're passing by the Eisenhower building, which is where all the president's men have their offices and women. All the president's men and women. It's interesting to think that the book back then when they wrote it, All the President's Men, it was mostly men and it's still kind of a much more sexist society than it is today. Even though that book isn't really all that old, the movie isn't all that old. All right, they've got a blocker set up here. I think she's gonna come out this side, but not yet, not for a bit. Soon enough. Mm, let's go down a bit. Uh, do we have time to eat? 149. Yeah, we got time. So just down from the White House is another White House. Yeah, another executive residence. The Octagon House. So named because it has six sides. Yeah, I don't know why they call it the Octagon House either. But the Octagon House served as the White House after the British burned down the White House in the War of 1812. But it was only a few months later, I guess around Christmas in 1814, that um, James Madison, who was living here, oh, hang on, I got some of my eye. He signed the Treaty of Ghent. The Treaty of Ghent ended the War of 1812, and it was signed right inside this building. In fact, the table, the table that he signed it on is still inside here in this more or less museum owned by the American Institute of Architects. Now, this house was built by a big landowner named Colonel Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-E. Now, Taylor also had the Taylor House in Lafayette Park. You remember that story I told you about Francis Scott Key's son being murdered by that jealous congressman? Well, after he was shot, he was taken into the Taylor House on Lafayette Park. Same Taylor, or the same family, different house. Okay, let's spin back around. I think we're going to get rid of the scooter soon. Now, Marine One comes in tomorrow night about 8.45, back from the trip to Asia. But uh, my experience has been that nighttime landings are just really, really hard to film. Don't really see much. And, uh, yeah, it's, the same. <laughs> it's not really worth the effort. So we're probably going to skip the landing tomorrow. Okay, let's see how many tourists are up here today. Mm, got a little bit of construction going on. Excuse me. Oh, sorry.
Pretty much the same as always. Some secrets for those guys. John. Okay. Let's go. Now we're on a bike. We got rid of the scooter and we missed the motorcade. Okay, so now it's time to go get some lunch. The motorcade left early, very early, 1.30 for a 2.45 appointment. The motorcade bailed out pretty darn early, so no joy there. We got a lot of Secret Service up here on bikes. It could be a civil disturbance team, or it could just be a bunch of guys out cruising because the weather is really nice and they all met up for like a roll call or something. Probably the latter. <laughs> Still same old, same old out here. Let's spin down, let's head over towards Chinatown today and see what we can find. Now this black building here on the left, this is the Martin Luther King Public Library. This is the main branch of the DC Public Library system. The old one is the Carnegie Library, which is a couple blocks north of here, but that was bought by Apple <laughs> and is now I don't think it was bought. It's still owned by DC, but it was leased by Apple for their flagship store and a small museum about the District of Columbia. It's on the other side of Chinatown, where we're heading into now. Down there is Carnegie Library. That's now the Apple store. It's that building with the green roof between those buildings. Couldn't really see it much. This, however, is Chinatown, or as the locals know it, China Block, because it's basically a block long had a Chinese character at one time. There's the Taiwanese arch they donated the government of Taipei. But now most of the Chinese businesses have fled to the suburbs and been replaced by yuppies. Still though, the law requires all signage down here to be in English and in Chinese. So you see streets, you see like a bank, it's got the name in Chinese. This place down here, Walk and Roll, this is the former home of the Surat Boring House. The Surat Boring House was where the conspirators plotted the abduction of Abraham Lincoln in 1865. And that was here in what is now a Walk and Roll restaurant. I guess that's Chinese and sushi. Oh, what's going on here? Art show. Free art. This is the National Building Museum. This is one of the most beautiful buildings in Washington, especially on the inside. And outside today, it looks like they're having some sort of art show. DC artists or local university artists. I'm not sure who's putting this one on. Community Day. So just community artists from DC, I guess, putting up art. Let's swing around. Okay. That's the Metro headquarters over there, that building there, they run the subways, but they're moving, they're getting a new building. And this is the Building Museum, absolutely gorgeous building on the inside. This is where they handled all the Civil War pensions, all the veterans' pensions were handled out of this building. Today it's a museum of architecture. It's a private museum, so you got to pay money to go in, it's only 10 bucks. But it's kind of cool, especially if you like architecture. It's got a really neat gift store, lots of unique stuff, and it's right across from the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. I was here the other day. I biked down that side. Let's go by on this side today. And you can see what is done here. Last week, or whatever was Law Enforcement or Memorial Week, just a week or two ago. So the police forces from all over the country came to pay their respects to their fallen uh, officers. And there were remembrance certificates and messages of love and remembrance. Knox County, Tennessee, New Jersey State Police, U.S. Park Rangers, I Love You More, Chicago, San Diego, Park Police, Park Ranger, Minneapolis, FBI Special Agent, Park Ranger, Minneapolis Police, Maryland State Police, 
every every year they add new names to the memorial and you can see down at the bottom those are a little bit lighter those names as uh, they've just been added I guess they added uh, over 300 names this year I think it was 500 names I believe it was just a huge number of names this year I think normally it's about 250 to 300 per year Yonkers Police Department died in 1939. So it's not just recent. It's police officers over the last 100 years or so who are memorialized. U.S. Marshal. Mechanicsville, New York. And this is the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial and Fountain. And now they have a museum over here. I haven't actually been in this museum. It just reopened recently, but then because of the opening week, it was quite busy. Let's spin down a little bit further into towards Union Station. Maybe we're going to go to Shake Shack today. That'd be something different. This building? No. The next one. So this building here, and then the next two buildings, I believe, make up the Georgetown University Law School. All right, Georgetown's Law School, that's it right there, uh, is based down in this part of town. Yeah, actually, that's the dormitory back there as well. And I think they have a library building, so maybe four buildings now. So Georgetown's Law School is over here. It's a rather large law school. I think there's 500 per class, so 1,500 uh, students at any one time. That's, that's huge. At Notre Dame, I think we were like 500 total or 600 total at most. Yeah. And they just had their graduation ceremonies. Georgetown graduated over the weekend, so you can see the tents are still up. And there are now 500 more lawyers in this world. Yay! <laughs> okay. Now, oddly, in this little park over here, oh, there's the U.S. Capitol down there in the street. Uh, this is New Jersey Avenue. But over here is the goddess of democracy. This is from Tiananmen Square in China. This is a replica and is now called the Victims of Communism Memorial to the 100 million who died from communism around the world. And uh, some anti-communist anti activists were successful in getting this piece of land and putting up this memorial. I think the Congress uh, helped them out, dedicated in 2007. Yeah, there's a little park over here. Yeah. There's a goddess of democracy statue erected by students in Tiananmen Square in 1989. But it's about all who have suffered from Stalin or North Vietnam and other boat people. All right, let's spin down this way. Let's go find a burger or something in this magnificent building. Uh, healthiness. You know what's really hard about this? It's right there. It's Shake Shack. That's a burger. I mean, I'm eating this <coughs> salad. Uh. Okay, guys. That was a salad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna make our way back out down to the mall, find my car, go pick up my kids, and maybe find something to do tonight. Because today has been pretty boring. Now, the other day, I showed you the Frances Perkins home, one of many of her homes, but the one she stayed in, in the Calorama neighborhood of Washington, D.C. This is the Frances Perkins Department of Labor. Frances Perkins was the Secretary of Labor under FDR, served 12 plus years, I guess, and she was the first woman member of the cabinet. 
Uh, so she is memorialized with the naming of that building, Francis Perkins Building. Hmm. Okay, let's get back to my car, which is probably going to get a ticket soon because I didn't pay. That's the uh, modern art gallery. You can tell by the giant 14-foot blue rooster on the roof. There he is. I haven't gone in. Problem going in museums is I have to like dump all my stuff out of the security. It's really quite a pain. Park police on an electronic motorcycle harassing the ice cream man, making sure he parks his ice cream truck properly. Now he's zoomed off. So there's the archives again. Can't show you the inside. <laughs> so guys, that was my day. Kind of boring, I know, but uh, some days in Washington it's boring. We'll try it tomorrow, make something more interesting. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all then.